In this tutorial, I'm going to be looking at examples that you see here of argument uh, of the form z my argument z minus z1 over z minus z2 is equal to alpha, where z is the complex variable. Um, I'm assuming that you know certain things about the, the argument, for example, of z equals to pi by 4, that you'd know that that is a line going like that, a half line, or even arg z minus 2 equals 3 pi by 4. That would be if we mark them at point 2 there, go in there with that being a half line, all the points on there are by obey this rule. So we're using that as an assumption that you know. I haven't done a, a video tutorial for that. I'm actually decided to do perhaps the most problematic one first. Okay, now the, the first, so looking at this, we're going to do what we're going to do is we're going to do it kind of long ways if you like the, the way that some textbooks do it doing a diagram and um, deducing uh, that it's going to be an arc of a circle all of these all of these things here will be arcs of circles okay so we, that's what we're going to expect from any any loci of that form it's going to be an arc but the thing is what type of arc of the circle and we'll look at some kind of basic um, kind of rules, if you like, uh, on how to actually draw that quickly so that we don't always have to fiddle around with the angles as we're going to in the first example. OK, let's just look at the first example. Um, one of the things that we're going to, I'm also assuming, I should say, is this very important property of arguments that behave like logarithms, really arg of z1 over z2 is equal to arg z1 minus arg z2 okay that's very important we use that also as a basic principle in this okay so now if i want to re if i want to rewrite this now um, using that i'm going to write it as arg z minus 2 minus arg z plus 2 equals to alpha right, equals to pi by 4 well, pi by 2 should I say okay now let's suppose we well, let's just suppose we knew what arg, the actual angle that arg z minus 2 is let's call it angle alpha not alpha, uh, let's call it, we could call it beta, say. And we could call this one, here, let's call this one, I don't know, theta. Equals theta. Okay, let's draw those. As I said, we know that we know what these look like. This one, it's going to start at the point 2 and be a half line like that, say. OK. Um, we, I've just marked on the beta, the beta arbitrarily. Of course, it's going to vary, but suppose we're going to have to draw it somewhere. So let's draw it there. OK. Now, let's draw the other one. Uh, here, uh, let's call it theta. Okay. Theta. Now, playing around with the angles here, what we'll see is this angle here, we're, we're thinking radians here for, for this purpose. Not absolutely necessary because we're not involved with calculus of any of this. So we could do, work in degrees, but uh, we're going to work in radians. So that's pi minus beta is our angle there because it's uh, on a straight line we can therefore 
seed this angle here if we look at that that's going to be the angles in a triangle all add up to pi so that's pi take away the angle theta here at this angle there take away the angle theta minus pi minus beta and lo and behold you get that angle equal because the pi cancels and that angle equals beta minus theta let's mark that on the angle there is beta minus theta okay right well that actually if you look at it is what we've got let me just rewrite this now we've let this be equal to beta and we've let this angle be equal to theta and we know that equals pi by 2 well we've got that angle marked on the diagram so that means that this angle pi by 2 a right angle okay so we've got that as a right angle so what does this actually mean well i'm going to uh, what it actually means is this important circle property i'm going to actually show this in geogebra in a second but all of the points because of course theta and beta can alpha uh, can vary it's uh, it's theta and beta varies and as they vary we're going to get a half circle it's a half circle because of a very uh, because it, it's a it's a right angle okay so we know that the angles in a semicircle of right angles so we know it's going to be a half circle so i'm going to do it i'm going to go to geogebra now um that's the answer by the way it's a half circle going from from the uh, from here to well, from two to minus two okay um and uh going to start on debt on geogebra and then we're going to i'm going to give you a quick way of doing it so we don't have to play around with the angles and fiddle around like that this in this case it's not too difficult but in case in in cases where it's at an angle like this and you know whatever it's difficult to decide which side the arc is on so i'm just going to show you our, a quick way of doing that but let's go to geogebra first okay okay here we got it okay so let's look. okay i've marked the, the angle in degrees here because it's a little easier to code it that way but you can see that although the angles as i mark them i think they might be labeled differently on here as well beta and theta can vary the actual angle on the edge there semicircle remains constant to pi by two okay now once i've got geogebra up it might be worth imagine uh visiting what ha would happen if the angle were greater or less than 90. well if it it were less than 90 okay for example that or pi by two then we get a bigger than half circle so for example if the angle were pi by three 60 degrees okay then we would get an angle less than well, it's difficult to turn me on 60 but you've got the idea that you will get will get a bigger than half circle so 90 degree 90 degrees or pi by two gives us a semicircle a angle which is bigger than 90 degrees three quarters pi for example 135 that would be a kind of smaller than half circle like that like a tiny heart the minor arc if you like of the circle whereas if you go beyond an angle more than pi by two we're going to get a bigger major arc of the circle 
Okay, so that's one. Hopefully, that hopefully that's helpful in the, in the uh, other examples we're going to see. Um, hopefully, that will help us. Now, uh, okay, let's have a let's have a look. Go back to the actual questions. The diagram is still for question one there, um, with uh, some of the angles and annotations taken down. Uh, one of the problems we've got is that this is quite long-winded to do what I did with all the angles and work it out to actually come up with a quick answer for um, a quick kind of sketch for it. Because quite often these there's only two, three marks for this. So it really, we don't want to be spending too long fiddling around with the angles. And all we're really going to be doing is deciding whether it's the top arc like that or whether it's the bottom arc. Okay, well, there is a way of, to of actually doing that quickly, and it's this. If we take the bot, if we take the top of our thing here, which is represented by two, and we go to the bottom, which in this case is represented at the minus two, it starts. It needs to go anti always anti clockwise. That will really help us to quickly get which side the sketch is on. Okay, um, from from top to bottom, from Z one in our general form. Okay, so that means that we should be able to quickly um, be able to do two, uh, three, and four. We, let's just uh, look at number two then. Okay, so looking at this, will the top uh, is represented by the. We're going to be starting at minus three i, and the bottom. That's at two. Okay, so it's an arc of a circle. Now, first of all, remember what I said about the size of this angle. The size of that is less than pi by two. That makes it bigger, like a bigger part of an arc like that. Okay, as opposed, if it were more than pi by two, it would be a smaller arc. So that's the first thing. The second thing, which direction? Well, we're going in an anti-clockwise direction, so it's this way. Okay. So looking at it, it's going to do something, obviously this isn't going to be an accurate sketch by any stretch, but it's going to do something like this. We only required a, you know, we're only required to do a uh, rough sketch for it. If we, we, we don't need to mark on our lines, I'm going to do these and rub them off. Okay, but if we were to mark on our lines, we would see that the angle Tended at the edge here, this angle here would be pi by three. Okay, so let's take all that off because we only really want to see the the arc of the circle. So that's much quicker. We can see it's going in anti-clockwise. Do check that after all this, this one's the three i uh, minus three i to two. Okay, and that is indeed anti-clockwise, isn't it? Do double check that. It's easy to get them mixed up. Don't necessarily want to see the arrow on the diagram, by the way. Well, I doubt if it really matters. Okay, so on to question two. Now, question two, I'm going to add um, something here as well. And I'm going to, because it is a pretty common one, this. Um, I'm going to imagine, imagine as for part B, it said find center and radius of circle. It's possible to do that with all of these cases. Well, number one is easy. You can see the radius is two and the center is the origin. But number two, it wouldn't be particularly easy to see where the center of this circle is. It would be doable, but very unlikely and very fiddly. So we won't, um, certainly not required if, if only a sketch is needed. But in this part, for question three, it is quite possible that you could say find centre and radius of circle. So let's add that onto the question, just make it, just to add that aspect to it. A bit of exam practice, because they do sometimes ask that, find centre and radius of circle. Okay, 
So let's just draw some more axes. That one's our number two. Number one. Okay. Okay, so uh, let's tidy the screen up a bit, but um, I'm just going to change the question slightly before I get going, just to make the point. Otherwise, it doesn't work out as easily. And uh, uh, this is just to make it more typical of the kind of thing you could be asked to do. Um, so that's now 3 pi by 4. Okay, it's 3 pi by 4. Try that properly. 3 pi by 4. Okay, um, and let's change that one back because we've got 3 by pi by 4 there. Let's change this one to pi by 4. Okay, so let's mark on the points. Uh, the top one is represented by 2i. That's the imaginary axis along there. The bottom one is represented by minus 2. Okay, right now, looking at this, okay, that's the actual arc of the circle. Um, it's perhaps drawn a little bit uh, inaccurately, of course it is, but uh, it's going to be, I know that it's going to be le a, a kind of minor arc because the angle is so big. If, it, if it's pi by 2, remember, semicircle, bigger than pi by 2, something more like that, smaller than pi by 2, something more like that. Okay. I knew it went in, going to go in this direction because it's anti-clockwise from top to bottom. And that, as far as I can see, that's anti-clockwise. So, actually, I know that this is going to be the centre of the circle. Okay. So, and I know that the centre will be zero, zero. How do I know that from a rough sketch like this? Well... If we look at this angle here, as we say, that angle there is going to be 3 pi by 4. That means the centre, wherever it is, has got to be 3 pi by 2. Well, 3 pi by 2 is 270 degrees. So that is just an important, uh, you may remember it from GCSE, that kind of one which said the angle at the centre of a circle is twice the angle on the circumference. You may remember that from a few years back. It's come back. Uh, it's come back here. It is. So the angle at the centre of the circle, because we would have the whole circle would come around like this, and the angle at the centre of the circle would be three pi by two, because the angle on the circumference, as marked, is three pi by four. Now, because three by two pi by two is two seventy degrees, that confirms that the centre is the origin. Uh, the radius is therefore two. Okay. So let's just do the fourth one. I don't think it's realistic to find the centre and radius of these. But by the way, if you really had to, it would be quite possible to do. To do It just would be quite fiddly. You'd have to play around with it. Um, if you had to with the earlier one, because this is pi by 3, this angle here would have to be double that, which is 2 pi by 3. Doesn't look very... Um, realistic really does it but anyway that angle will be 2 pi by 3 and that would enable us by splitting this up whatever splitting by the triangle or whatever by doing some playing around we would would be quite pro troublesome uh, and that's why I'm not doing it it's not particularly a good use of uh, this time but uh, it would be quite possible to do um, but in, to, in the exam it would be more simple cases and a classic one is 3 pi by 2 and 3 pi by 4 to identify the center of the circle okay because it's a, that's the one which is uh, 3 pi by 2 is at 270 degrees which is why i changed the angle in question 3 uh, from uh, what it was to uh, 3 pi by 4 okay 
Uh, finally, question four. Let's just write the axes for that, and hopefully then uh, we uh, got a kind of good angle on this. Okay, so now it's pi by four. Um, so that means that we're going to, um, yeah. So that means it's going to be bigger than half. Or so it's going to be the major arc, but it's going to start uh, our point A. And it's going to start from minus two i. So it's minus two i. Let's mark that there. Say to three. That's there. Okay, now it's going to go anti-clockwise. Okay, now anti-clockwise is going to be that way again, again, similar direction to the last one. Okay, now I know that the, the, the center of the circle is going to be around there. I'll tell you why in a moment, but I'm not, again, I'm not going to actually pursue this in terms of working out the actual center of it. Although again, it, we could do it. It'll be it's not a very good circle, but hopefully you've got the idea that uh, it will be. Oh, I can't even. I can't bear that. Actually, I'm going to do a bit of a better job of that circle. I'm going to cheat a bit and draw draw a whole circle around it. Bear with me with this. I'm going to trace this. Oh, that's not very really good. Trace around. And get rid of the other circle. Okay, that's better. Still not great, a bit wobbly, but that'll do. So it's going to be like that. Okay. Um, so because it's gone anti clockwise from A to B, A is a point represent uh, is at minus 2 minus i, and B is at the point 3. Okay. Right. So that is it. Um, just wondering uh, if we did need to work out the centre of the circle because this angle is three pi by four uh, is equal to pi by four. If we did need to work out the centre of the circle, we double that and would use the fact that that is a right angle, which would be. A little bit fiddly but not that bad just about possible to have to work out the center of that circle we could go take the midpoint of this uh, do various things a little bit of playing around and we could find identify the center of that circle but uh, I'm not going to do that here but uh, we could do yeah, and if it's just about possible um, do, but it would just be a geometry problem from there and we're using that um, property uh, let's rub that out. You don't really want that. Okay, just uh, um, an extension question, I suppose. <laughs> just whilst we're at it, just before we finish, because it's only been 23 minutes and uh, don't want to sort of change folks out there. Suppose we were asked, now that we've done that, for what the, what the uh, loci would be for the other arc, minor arc of this circle. Okay, well, I've never seen a question like this, it just occurred to me now. Well, first of all, you might remember the theorem from GCSE saying opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral add up to 180 degrees. So in other words, if this angle here is pi by 4, the other one, it's got to be 3 pi by 4. Okay. So we know that the angle is 3 pi by 4. So if we were asked for the loci of the minor arc of this circle, it would be this. Argument of z minus 3 over z plus 2 plus i is equal to 3 pi by 4. I think that's right. Let's just check. Yes, because it's going anti-clockwise from 3 to i. So that would be the answer to that question if it were, if that were asked. Okay, so the minor arc given by this. I've never seen a question like that in the exam, but you never know. Minor arc given by 
Let's notice how the whole thing is swapped around. Had we had argument of z minus 3 over z plus 2 plus i, but with the angle the same, pi by 4, then of course that would be going over like here, that way. Okay, but this wasn't that. It was, uh, it was just uh, even more imaginative. Uh, we had to use the fact that GCSE thing, if you remember from quadrilaterals, opposite angles are a very good example because uh, opposite angles of a quadrilateral add up to 180 or, or, or add up to pi. So if, if this angle were 110, then that one would have to be 70. Do you remember that? So that's what I use there. So if I know the angle here is 3 pi by 4, that the other one, if I know the angle here is pi by 4, then the angle here has got to be 3 pi by 4 because it's got to add up to um, 180 degrees, which is pi. Okay, so that's it. Hopefully that's got it cleared. So remember that I suppose this is the real thing to the real shortcut, which some textbooks uh, don't include, some tutorials out there haven't included. Well, I don't think I'm the first person to ever come up with this. It can be proved that, but uh, it, it's not particularly easy, and um, certainly beyond FP2, uh, a standard FP2. So it's a useful thing to know, to work out which side we're going to put the arc of the circle. Okay, hope you enjoyed that. Bye.